Hello, <clears throat> Dave Kenworthy here, 3rd of the 9th, 2021. And um, we're looking at the Horus solution now. Um, obviously the eye of Horus. Um, and Berryman talks about this. And he tells us that the Hecat was an official corn measure in Egypt and its sub-multiples in the demediated series, one half to one over 64, were always written in symbols now known as Horusai notation. And then he shows us, and it's this. Horusai notation, not sure if you can see that. But the series is the Hecat is a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second and a sixty-fourth. And the Eye of Horus is represented by the number sixty-three. And the Hecat is represented by the perfect cube of four times four times four, which is sixty-four. And it's the official corn measure in Egypt and it's an, a measure of volume. And the design of the Giza Pyramid is based on the relationship between 63 and 64. And we can find why the royal cubit is a royal cubit because of its position within the, uh, within the ratio of 63 to 64. And we can also find the imperial measure in between that ratio <clears throat> and 64 is base 100 so the first thing I want to talk about is what's gone wrong with metrology what's gone wrong with the current state of metrology now this is not an accusation but but we're left with a standard in in John Neal's book which we have to take as the best Analysis of historical metrology apart from Berryman's work. And I think John Neal has made some mistakes. But he's given us the standard, and the standard is two cubit lengths, one of 20.736, and the other one, multiplying that by 175 over 176, we get this 20.61818 royal cubit. And that's well within Petri's determination, first determination. And we're being asked to accept that as a standard. Now, what I'm suggesting is that the new metrology has realised that these measures are not base 100. And the way we can work that out is by multiplying them both by 4.8. And we get two numbers very close to 100, but not quite. And then we divide those both by 100. And now, to get the base 100 cubit, we divide that into the cubit above, that into the cubit above. Every cubit, once this number has been worked out by multiplying the cubit by 4.8, will produce this base 100 cubit. It's hidden inside of every cubit, even when the cubit's 1. <clears throat> so we, we know how this is working now and how this is changing accepted standard and moving it to a different standard which is not accepted. And this is the base 100 cubit, and the royal cubit is that, times 0.99. That's Berryman's Egyptian royal cubit. Not this one and not this one. And the sphere that we analysed in the previous presentation 
is 22 over 42. And in that, there are 39.375 spheres. <clears throat> and this and this are in the Hecat solution. And the other qubit that's in the Hecat solution is the eclipse qubit. And it's... the eclipse unit divided by seven and it's that and we're going to see how this works now and it's all down to the IO4 solution so let's have a look at it the Hecat is the perfect cube and the official core measure and it's there marked in yellow the Babylonian qubit is 1000 divided by 36 the GP base qubits are determined by these numbers. 99 one hundredths of 64 is 63.36. There are 63360 inches in an imperial mile. The eclipse qubit is 6364 of the eye of Horus. Sorry, of the Heka, and that is the Eye of Horus. So we go to this first column, and we find that the ancients were manipulating prime numbers. And this is prime 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 cubed is 64. This is prime 11, and we know that this, this is divisible by 11, and it's 99 one hundredths of 64. And prime 7 is the Eye of Horus, 63 sixty-fourths of the Hecat. Now the way we get the GP base in qubits, based on these ratios, is we multiply each one of these numbers by the Babylonian qubit, which is 1000 divided by 36. So we've got 100 there, 64 there, and 1,000 in the top line here. So we multiply that by that, and we get this number of qubits. We do the same again and get 1760, and the same again and get 1750. So this is um, a diminishing scale from top to bottom. But then what we find is we've got a fixed base that we've already discovered in previous presentations and it's this number here so that stays constant and we divide that by these number of qubits and it produces on a descending scale a rising value for the qubit and 20.65 is aligned with the Hecat which is why it's the royal qubit the 99 one hundredths of the royal qubit is producing the base 100 qubit. And that's the fabulous complexity of this system. That is a base 100 qubit produced by number 99. And that is why it's so difficult to understand this system. Um, and then finally, we've got this value here, which is 146666. That's the eclipse unit divided by 7, and that, when multiplied by 1750, is giving the same base. Now, one of the things that, that comes out of this for me that's very important is that um, if we divide that... No, sorry, that qubit by that, we get 0 0.75. This is the base 100 qubit. And Harry Sivertson told me that the digit is 0 0.75 that's the correct digit to use and he was right but it's taken me a long long time to understand why but it's this model now that shows me exactly why harry sivertson was correct and we wouldn't expect anything else from harry because his measures are, are uh, exceptional and um, there's nothing wrong with them but harry is using this standard i think he certainly quotes it this standard um, that Neil and Michelle have discovered. And, and it doesn't work. 
it doesn't give us the base 100 qubit and we have to start from a standard and the standard's base 100 and that is giving us this GP base it's giving us these qubits giving us the same base with this arrangement this eye of Horus arrangement now not only is that complicated but then we've got this royal qubit of 20.625s and there are various calculations of this so let's have a look at the first one we're using this Berryman digit of 0.7291666 and that as I've said is 35 divided by 27 multiplied by 9 over 16 so it's fractional and this is 198 divided by 7 so there are two fractional calculations here giving us this qubit and if we multiply that qubit by um, multiply by 4.8 we get 99 it's a base 99 qubit even though it's a royal qubit but it's produced on the base it's not produced on the base 99 line it's produced on the base 100 line this is what's making it the royal qubit i've always i've always found this um a problem in that this royal qubit is base 99 and yet it's being used in a in a design that's got that number of inches in its base and this is the solution here this number and this is how we get it. It all comes through the eye of Horus going down from 64 to 63. Now the second way we can calculate this row cube is 20, 20 digits of that, giving a Riemann of that, multiplied by 99 over 70, again giving 20.625. And then the third method that's only come out fairly recently is it's 28.125 times 0.733 and that's the base 100 digit <clears throat> it's that divided by 50,000 now this is 225 units of 0.125 so 28 units in a qubit will be re represented by 224 under this system so we can see that the scaling factors are everywhere and Berryman writes in his book about um, I should have had this to hand but as usual I haven't he writes about capacity ratios in the Rhine papyrus and he says in the Rhine mathematical papyrus there are six problems dealing with large corn bins and they teach the pupil to multiply the volume measured in cubic qubits by 3 over 2 in order to express the capacity in car of 20 hecat rating. This hecat contained 10 hins and this hin was rated 32 rho. Thus, 96,000 units in the rho, 300 in the hin, 30 in the hecat, 3 over 2 in the car, and one in the cubic qubit. Well, you can go and work that out yourself, but I'm not doing it. But it's all contained in this. And Berryman is telling us very exactly how it was done. And we can see from, from this. And then the eclipse qubit at the end, I've got it as that times seven gives this eclipse unit so it's not really much more I can say it's extremely complicated it's extremely complicated to calculate the royal qubit but it's all in Berryman's book and it's the Horus solution and um, if you look for the Horus um, solution that will be attached to this video presentation on YouTube, you'll know that this is what you'll be able to look at. So thank you.